Warmest greetings to all my incredible subscribers and new viewers alike. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Hurricane Afia 2017. We hope you find it enlightening. Hurricane Afia, known as Storm Afia in Ireland and the United Kingdom, while extra tropical, was regarded as the worst storm to affect Ireland in 50 years, and was also the estimated Atlantic Major Hurricane. Tabrifa Major Hurricane is a storm that ranks as Category 3 or higher on the Sophia Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale Group and on record. The tenth and final consecutive hurricane and the sixth major hurricane of the very active 2017 Atlantic hurricane season, Afia had non-tropical origins from a decaying cold front on 6 October. Located within a favourable environment, the storm steadily strengthened over the next two days, drifting north and then southestwards before becoming a hurricane on 11 October. After becoming a Category 2 hurricane and fluctuating in intensity for a day, Afia intensified into a major hurricane on 14 October south of the Azores, brushing the archipelago with high winds and heavy rainfall. Shortly after achieving peak intensity, Afia began weakening as it accelerated over progressively colder waters to its northeast towards Ireland and Great Britain. Completing an extratropical transition early on 16 October, Ophelia became the second storm of the European windstorm season. Early on 17 October, the cyclone crossed the North Sea and struck western Norway, with wind gusts up to 17th in Rogaland County, before weakening during the evening of 17 October. The system then moved across Scandinavia, before dissipating over Norway on the next day. Three deaths can be directly attributed to Ophelia, all of which occurred in Ireland. Total losses from the storm were less than initially feared, with a minimum estimate of total insured losses across Ireland and the United Kingdom of a million. Prepare yourself for an in-depth analysis of meteorological history in this section. On 3 October, a broad low-pressure area had formed along a stationary front about 460 miles west of the Azores. The low meandered over the North Atlantic for days. On 6 October, a large wind field had formed associated with the low. The low only developed shallow, weak convection, along with a long, curved cloud band, and a cold core center typical characteristics of an extratropical low. The system began to acquire subtropical characteristics on the next day, benefits from warm sea surface temperature of 27 C. Thus the National Hurricane Center NHC noted for a high chance of tropical cyclogences. Although the system lost some of its organization due to dry mid-level air, it managed to develop gale force winds and a well-defined center. Deep convection continued to develop near the center early on 9 October, and the NHC classified the system as Tropical Storm Ophelia at 6 UTC, about 875 miles west-southwest of the Azores. Despite moving over marginally warm waters of 26.5 C, the effects of cold air temperatures aloft and decreasing wind shear allowed Ophelia to gradually strengthen. At the same time, Ophelia drifted several hundred miles southwest of the Azores due to the cutoff from mid-latitude westerlies. In addition, the large temperature contrast between the unusually warm ocean surface and the extremely cold temperatures in the upper atmosphere provided instability for Ophelia's thunderstorms, which allowed the storm to continue strengthening despite marginally warm ocean temperatures. Late on 10 October, Ophelia began to move southestwards as it embedded in a mid to upper level trough. A slight degradation of the structure of the storm resulted in some weakening early on 11 October, but this was short-lived as deep convection wrapped around the entire storm. After developing a ragged eye, the NHC upgraded Ophelia to Hurricane at 6 UTC about 760 miles south of the Azores. Upon the upgrade, Ophelia becoming the record-tying 10th consecutive hurricane to form during the 2017 hurricane season. This was the fourth such occurrence after 1878, 1886, and 1893 seasons. Afterwards, Ophelia steadily intensified as it became nearly stationary, intensifying to Category 2 hurricane late on 12 October, as the eye became better defined. 
a fee year achieved its initial peak intensity at 6 UTC on 13 October, with maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour and a central pressure of 966 ma. The hurricane accelerated to the northeast, under the influence of the large mid-latitude trough. Feely weakened slightly later that day. The cloud tops warmed due to moderate vertical wind shear, but wind shear decreased shortly afterwards, allowed a failure to strengthen once again. Its eye became better defined, and the NHC upgraded a failure to a Category 3 hurricane at 12 UTC on 14 October. At Al, this was the farthest east that a storm of such intensity had been observed in the satellite era. It attained its peak intensity simultaneously with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour and a central pressure of 959 mile while located approximately 575 miles southwest of the Azores. Early on 15 October, increasing wind shear and cold waters of 20 Celsius caused a failure to gradually weaken. Embedded within a fast southwesterly flow, a fear raced to the north northeast with a speed of 38 miles per hour. After losing all of its deep convection and becoming attached to a warm front and a cold front, the storm became extratropical at 12 UTC on the next day, about 310 miles southwest of Misenhead. The extratropical low then made landfall in southwestern Ireland, near Valencia Island with winds of 75 miles per hour at 11 UTC. Afterwards, Ophelia's extratropical remnants tracked over Ireland and made its second landfall in Surrey, in a Hebrides with winds of 60 miles per hour at 11.45 UTC. On 17 October, the extratropical low turned to the east-northeast and tracked over the North Sea. The storm made its third and final landfall in Vige, Astabol with winds of 45 miles per hour at 5.30 UTC before dissipating over Norway early on 18 October. As we move forward, let's uncover the untold stories and fascinating intricacies of Azores. The Portuguese Institute of the Sea and the Atmosphere issued a red warning for heavy rainfall for the eastern group of the Azores show Miguel, Santa Maria and Formigas on 14 October from 5.59 UTC to 11.59 UTC. An orange gale warning was issued for the eastern group for the afternoon through night of October, as well as a yellow alert for high seas. Rainfall alerts were also issued for the central group to Syra, Graciosa, Sir Jorge Island, Pico and Fail. The president of the Regional Service of Civil Protection of the Azores, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Neves, announced there was no serious damage. High winds downed for trees on Sir Miguel three in the Ponta Delgada district and one in Povo. The island also experienced some minor flooding. In the central group of the Azores, there were a few instances of light damage, with one home suffering a roof leak. In this chapter, we'll be unravelling the enigma of Iberia and discovering its transformative power. Starting on 15 October 2017, winds from a fee fanned wildfires in both Portugal and Spain. The wildfires have claimed the lives of at least 49 individuals, including 45 in Portugal and 4 in Spain, and dozens more were injured. In Portugal, more than 4,000 firefighters battled around 150 fires. The National Hurricane Center's Tropical Cyclone report on Hurricane Ophelia makes no mention of the fires, thus the associated fatalities are not included as part of the storm total. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of Ireland. Met Iron, Ireland's National Meteorological Service, reported on 12 October that the storm would reach Ireland. On 14 October, it issued a status red warning, its highest storm category, for portions of Ireland. Issuing such a warning more than 48 hours in advance was unprecedented, as such warnings are normally issued within 24 hours of the event. On 15 October, the National Emergency Coordination Center and Met Iron convened to advise the public in relation to the post-tropical storm reaching Ireland. At 8.15 on the 15th, Satis Red was extended to all of Ireland, and all public education services were confirmed as cancelled. 
the Department of Education confirmed that all Montessori's coaches, primary and post-primary schools would be closed on 16 and 17 October. Other public services would be withdrawn such as court and district court services, third-level institutes such as UCC, CIT, University of Limerick, and Waterford Institute of Technology. Erlingus confirmed a number of flights from Cork Airport and Shannon Airport would be cancelled, with the likelihood of 50 flights being cancelled. All public transport previously scheduled within the Red Alert Zone were cancelled including bus, rail and ferry journeys. Bus Iron announced the cancellation of school bus services for the west of Ireland after Met Iron issued a rare status red warning affecting the southwestern and western counties of Wexford, Waterford, Cork, Kerry, Clare, Mayo and Galway. The Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government confirmed members of the public should not make any unnecessary journeys especially travelling within the red level warning areas and the department reiterated the storm's potential risk to life. On 16 October, gusts of up to 191 km were recorded at Fastnet Rock off the coast of County Cork, the highest wind speeds ever recorded in Ireland. 10 minutes sustained wind speeds at Rockies Point, also in County Cork, reached 111, with gusts of 156 km. ESB Group confirmed that more than 360,000 customers were without power in the wake of the storm. Two people, a man in Dundalk and a woman in Agalish, County Waterford, were killed when trees fell on their cars. In County Tipperary, another fatality occurred when a man was clearing a fallen tree with a chainsaw. Two men died in separate incidents after suffering fatal injuries while carrying out repairs to damage caused by Ophelia and Storm Brian. In Cork, a man died after he fell while working on a shed roof, and in County Wicklow another man died after falling from a ladder while carrying out repairs to his farm shed. Initially, it was estimated that a fee you would cause one euro fifty cents billion as billion worth of losses in Ireland, mostly due to the shutdown of economic activities on the day of its passage. However, as of 24 October, Insurance claims across the country just reached 50 or a million as million, much less than the initial estimation of damage. Total damage across the country stood at 68 euro 70 cents million as million. Let's now turn our attention to United Kingdom and examine its role within the larger context. The Met Office in the United Kingdom issued the first severe weather warnings for Ophelia on 12 October, referring to the hurricane as ex Ophelia in the context of the UK and Ireland windstorm season. The severe weather warning initially issued on 12 October was a yellow weather warning for wind, covering Northern Ireland, Northern and Western England, Wales, and Southern and Western Scotland, valid between 12 and 11.55 BST on 15 October. The weather warning impact matrix warned of relatively severe impacts anticipated, although with a low level of certainty so far in advance preventing the issuance of AMBA weather warning initially. Subsequently, on 13 October, a yellow severe weather warning for wind was issued for Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland and Northern England, valid between 12.05 and 3 BST on 17 October. On 15 October, the weather warning for wind in Northern Ireland on 16 October was upgraded to an AMA weather warning. The arrival of Ophelia brought Sahara dust to parts of the United Kingdom, giving the sky an orange or yellow sepia appearance, and the sun a red or orange appearance. A strange burning smell was also reported across Devon, also attributed to the dust and smoke from forest fires in Portugal and Spain. Winds up to 115 were observed in Orlock Head, County Down, at the height of the storm. Approximately 50,000 households lost power in Northern Ireland. Insurance claims from Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland are estimated to reach million as million. In the next portion, we'll be immersing ourselves in the realm of Estonia and examining its broader implications. In Tallinn, Estonia, black rain fell because Ophelia brought smoke and the soot of fires to Estonia from Portugal, as well as dust from the Sahara Desert, report informs citing the Estonian media. 
we looked at photos from satellites and the Finnish weather service confirmed that the smoke and soot of the fires in Portugal and partly the dust from the Sahara reached us, meteorologist Tami Paljic said. Prepare yourself for an in-depth analysis of relation to climate change in this section. Climate scientist Reinhard Haasma of the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute said that climate change is likely to cause Europe to see more hurricanes like Ophelia as the oceans get warmer, although they were still comparing their models results previously reported in 2013 with those from other climate centers. But UCD professors Ray Bates and Ray McGrath argued that insofar as the influence of the sea surface temperature is concerned, the exceptional strength of storm Ophelia was due to natural variability rather than global warming. Stay connected and join our community by subscribing and following me on other platforms.